Hello, welcome back to Foose Entertainment. This time I will be reviewing Wes Craven's new nightmare. Give me a second here. Alright. Well, Wes Craven's new nightmare. This was my first Nightmare on Elm Street movie experience, and this this film scared the shit out of me when I actually um, saw it when I was on summer vacation with my dad um, back in 1995. When I was actually quite quite a lot younger, <laughs> 12, I believe. Um, but um, <clears throat> actually, to be told, I, I was actually 11 and a half when I saw this movie the first time. Um, this film is a work of genius. It's a work of art. There's uh, so many neat things I love about this movie. This is like um, one of those films is like one of a kind movie. It's been done one time. This concept of, of a movie was, was done once and that was with this movie and it has not been done again. The closest thing there actually is to Wes Craven's new nightmare and the idea of, of using heart reality and making um, you kind of like, you know, the movie is not a movie, it's heart's reality, and uh, but yet it's a movie type of concept, like uh, you're almost like, you don't you know, like the characters in the movie and the audience are like witnessing people making a movie and having real true horror gothic and terrorizing things happen to them while they're making a movie. The only film that came close to doing that, um, but not nearly as good as Wes Kramer's New Nightmare was In the Mouth of Madness from John Carpenter. <coughs> and uh, that film is brilliant too. But this one is definitely the one that's more brilliant. I thought the Wes Kramer's New Nightmare was just one hell of a good movie. Should have gone a dog there for a second. Yeah, he's fine. But um, yeah, this one hell of a movie. This is the, the third time that Wes Craven was involved in Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but it's the second time he's actually directed a Nightmare on Elm Street movie and wrote a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And this is like a, a celebration of Nightmare on Elm Street film series in a lot of ways. And he, he played nod to the original Nightmare film a lot in this movie, but this movie is the, his own movie. It's so much his own movie that it doesn't really feel like a Nightmare sequel. It's actually not a sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street movies. It exists in its own, almost like parallel universe world, in accordance with the Nightmare on Elm Street film series. And that's something I really found interesting about this movie. The overall look of Freddy Krueger in this movie, this is a different type of look for Freddy Krueger. Um, Freddy has different type of makeup, um, and I don't, I don't know if they actually had Robert work out and get bigger for this movie, but um, even his body is different in the movie. Um, Freddy is more um, threatening. He's a, a bigger, bulkier, bigger in life, um, far more evil and darker looking um, looking character in this movie. He's much more of a threat than he is in the in the previous six films. Um, the ma the makeup's different. Is more aged. He he um, I, uh, he looks more aged, like he's ancient evil. Um, the glove is it's not a glove anymore. Ardo, I would say, is still a glove, but it's, it's a glove that's made of like bone material, and it and it has five five blades instead of uh, instead of the traditional four of the letter glove that we we're not used to. Um, a lot of different things about the about this movie, but I think what I love about the movie is the fact that the atmosphere and, and the fact that they do so many cool things in the film that really drag you in. You just cannot take your eyes off this movie. And you know how I am about long movies. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. When it comes to James Bond movies, they keep your interest going with story and plot and um, and at cool action and mystery and intrigue. Well, when it comes down to Wes Craven's New Nightmare, it's a one hour and 50 minute movie that doesn't feel like a one hour and 50 minute movie. It feels like your, your traditional like 80, like 80 something minute scary movie from the 80s or 90s. But this one is actually like literally two hours long, and it does not bore you. It doesn't drag. Everything about this movie is just 
brilliant. So yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite scary movies of all time. It's just not my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie because um, this one does have a bit of flaws. Like I say that some of the acting could have been better in the movie. But uh, <clears throat> this is probably my second favorite Freddy Krueger movie. I would say um, on uh, the top two favorite Freddy films that I have, I would say that um, Nightmare 4, Dream Master, is my old, overall favorite one, and my second favorite one is Wes Kramer's New Nightmare. Well, let's go on to the premise of the film. Taking place 10 years after the um, first movie, and in real reality, in which, um, I might add, our actors actually play themselves in this movie. So you don't have Harry Lane Camp playing Nancy Thompson, or John Sackin playing um, Ed Thompson. Actually, it's not Ed Thompson, is it? Uh, Charles Thompson, I believe. The, the, the Lieutenant Charles Thompson. But, um, but yeah, they, they, they don't play the, the fictional characters they did in the first Nightmare film. They actually play themselves. Wes Craven even plays himself in this movie, which is, I thought was kind of cool, but pretty, pretty much, um... <coughs> Henry Lee and Ken has been stalked by this obsessive fan who uh, has been leaving um, weird mail in her mailbox, um, calling her, talking with a Freddy voice. They're giving her nightmares, and this is around a time in 1994 when you had a lot of earthquakes in, um, in California before that really good, great quick that they had back then. Which I might add, um, at the beginning of the film, when um, they actually have that going on in the movie, that's real people. That's actually that very, very big earthquake from 1994 in California. They actually had that on camera as it was happening, playing it into the movie. Which I thought was kind of interesting. So no, that was not, that was not film magic. That was real, that's just film catching real magic. Um, and basically, you find out that Wes Craven has been working on a new script to make it the definitive nightmare. And um, Bob Shea's trying to get Heather to play Nancy again, um, trying to hire her boyfriend, who is the lead um, visual effects artist on the Freddy Krueger movies. He's the only um, actor that doesn't play himself in the movie, he plays this actual fict fictional character named Chase. But um, what's, the, what, what's interesting about that, though, in real life, is that one of the visual effects workers on um, the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie actually is Hedder's husband, but a completely different guy. The guy looks more like a bouncer you would have in a bar or something. He's a big guy um, and stuff like that. And that's, that, that's real life right, right there. Hedder Linkamp actually is married to a visual effects uh, designer. Well, um... After her husband um, dies in a car car um, accident, um, and her son is being traumatized by uh, Freddy in his dreams and stuff like that, we find out that find out that Freddy actually has crossed over from um, films into heart reality. And um, it's, it's all connected to this new script that Wes Craven has been writing for a for a whole new Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And uh, basically, uh, as Wes Craven is writing scenes in the script, these scenes are actually happening in real reality to um, the actual actors and actresses that are involved, as well as Hedder's innocent son. And um, basically, Hedder comes face to face with a real life reality Freddy Krueger and has to battle it out with him, and she has to make a choice whether or not she is willing to play the hero again and battle out with Freddy one last time. And she does, and we see her uh, following her son. He left her, um, he was obsessed with Hansel and Gretel. A lot of, as a matter of fact, a lot of this has to do with Hansel and Gretel's story in a lot of ways, with Freddy being a witch and um, Hedder being Gretel and um, her son being Hansel. He's always been obsessed with the story, especially with the uh, part of the story where you had the breadcrumbs to find your way home. And so he literally left um, 
sleeping pills leading the way in the Freddy's like nether world and is and his um, header is actually taking the sleeping pills and getting drowsy she kind of necromances into actually being asleep in awake at the same time and then she finds her way into Freddy's nether world which is like a Literally, it's like a it's like a a, a nether world. It's like a um, myth a a, a, a a magical mystical world. And she goes into it, and um, she battles out with Freddy in his own world. And then, like in the Hansel and Gretel book, um, her and her son um, push Freddy into a, um, the fire and set him on fire. And there's a, there's a whole lot of uh, Really good visual effects in this one. This one has a lot of CGI in it as well, but it's used quite well because it's 1994, not when CGI was so fake looking. And they, and they just used it when it was necessary to use it, so it really plays well into it. Um, this film is just a, an amazing movie, in my opinion. Uh, now let's talk about audio and video. This one looks a lot like your typical 1990s movie in terms of, uh, of the video. This one has a combination of, I say, uh, warm, neutral, and cool temps, but it likes to really balance itself out for the most part in a neutral template of color in videotography and cinematography. Um, the, uh, the detail is pretty good in this movie when it comes to the picture as well. Although this one, due to the fact that CGI always had digital grain and bleeds on it. When they use CGI in this movie, they could not remove it with the HD transfer, so it still is there, but it's not that much of a distraction. And it kind of plays in with the whole overall look of the movie that they kind of filmed it like. Um, so the picture is pretty good. I actually liked it. Um, audio. This is the first Freddy Krueger movie to actually have DTS digital sound in theaters. So the, uh, you would think that the DTS HD Master Audio Track would have a, a lot more to offer than the previous. It doesn't. Um, it, there's a lot of good effects that are really directional, and, and they, they, there's a lot of good surround effects in the movie, but it just seems to me like just, there's so much neutrality with the, with the execution of the sound um, and how it's used um, throughout the five speakers in the sub. But um, it's, uh, overall, it's not that bad of a audio experience. But, um, it's nothing to write home about. But, it does sound like your average modern DTS track that you would have in a Blu-ray these days. So, there is that to say about it. Um, but that's pretty much my views on Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Did you like Wes Craven's New Nightmare? Did you not like it? Um... Do you like this video? Do you not like this video? Um, as always, subscribe. Check back from, from time to time. Um, share this video with friends. I will see you guys next time for my review of Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, The Producer's Cut. And until then, I will see you guys later.